And if we don't, we are essentially being controlled by big tech forever. We, we, we have, we're turned over our democracy. We've, we've, we've turned over our children. We've turned over literally our minds. We've turned them over to tech companies and algorithms. I, I, I think that's insane. It is insane. And where does it go? That's the... Like, how bad can this get? As long as I can still function, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep doing this. I mean, this is... Uh, it's important. It's important. I have five kids, okay? I, I, someday I hope I'm going to have grandkids. And, you know, it's important for... For, for the world right now, it's important for our democracy, which, as far as I'm concerned, is an illusion. It's an illusion. When you look at the numbers, you realize there's a player in here <laughs> that you don't see, that doesn't leave a paper trail, and that can shift millions of votes. And if it didn't exist, and someone introduced it, nefarious political parties or nefarious people would 100 percent be excited about it like look what we have now yeah 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 and then if we found out that someone who was like say if donald trump mm. you know if, if the democrats found out that donald trump had uh, implemented some sort of a system like you're talking yeah people would be furious that's right they would say he is a threat to democracy he should be locked up yep. he should be in prison for treason mm-hmm does it concern you that you're the only one? Well, I don't understand that because this is really good science. I mean, in, in, in other words, the the work I do has been published in top journals. Uh, that, that that initial scene paper that was published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. It has since been downloaded or ac or accessed from the National Academy of Sciences more than a hundred thousand times. For for a very technical scientific paper, that's practically unheard of i've never had that happen before and the you know the papers that i have coming out they're in top journals we're submitting more to top journals this is good science so why aren't 20 universities doing this stuff you know why because they're getting funding from google or they're terrified of google the 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 head of europe's largest publishing conglomerate his name is dopfner published a piece a few years ago was actually called Fear of Google. It's a superb piece. It's about how in a lot of industries right now, you cannot make a move without taking into account how that's how Google's going to react. I want to Google Fear of Google. Yeah, Google Fear of Google. Let's see what happens here. Yeah. See if you get Dopfner. Fear of... What's it suggest? Fear of rain, fear of God, G O O, fear of Google. Here we go. Uh, you ask a con artist, and they will tell you straight out. If you want to do a con, the more you know about someone, the easier it is. For sure. They they build digital models of all of us. You know, the bottom line here really goes back to to George Orwell, uh, which is you know, if you control information, you control everything. Yes. And. What we've done is we've we have lost control. Uh, uh, authorities, gatekeepers, who are well-trained journalists, let's say, um, you know, uh, we we've lost control over information. And information is now largely in the hands of algorithms, which are controlled by executives who are not accountable to the American public. They're accountable just to their shareholders. But I can tell you for sure that a lot of what's happening is is really being done very deliberately and strategically by the big tech companies. Because they're going to do, they have control over the information that everyone has access to, and they're going to do what's best for them, what makes them the most money, what spreads their values, and of course, sometimes what's good for intelligence purposes. They're going to do those things. And we have no idea what they're doing unless we track them. Have you ever had a conversation with anybody from Google? Well, Ray, Ray Kurzweil's uh, an old, old friend of mine. His wife, Sonia, I was on the board of her school for autistic kids for 15 years. I mean, I, 
I went to their daughter's bat mitzvah. They came to my son's bar mitzvah, et cetera, et cetera. So, but he won't talk to me now. He won't talk. He's to head you. of engineering at Google. Neither of them now will talk to me. Just because he is an executive at Google. He's an executive at Google. I I was supposed to be on a panel with a, another top executive at Google who used to be a professor at like Stanford or some big school. And I'm supposed to be on a panel with him in Germany. And he when he found out what it is I do, he he pulled out. He did not show up. There were a thousand people in that audience who came to see him, the Google guy, not me. He didn't he didn't show up. Wow. We they uh I believe I'm pretty darn sure and this upset my uh, wife, Misty, at, at the time. They sent a, a a private investigator to our house. P For what? Posing, posing as someone who wanted to be a research intern. What What did he do when he was in the house? I don't know. Did he leave bugs? Uh, did he, I don't know. I have no idea what he did, but... You know, I was sitting there with a, a staff person. We're asking the guy questions like we do for anyone who, who applies to work with us. And the guy, first of all, he's wearing a, like a white shirt and a tie, which no one does in San Diego. So, uh, But we were asking him questions, and, and his answers didn't make any sense at all. So? None of this made sense. We looked the guy up afterwards. He, he was supposed to get back to us. He didn't. We looked him up. He worked for a private investigation firm. Now, how do, why do I think Google sent him? Because the, I had written to that executive at, at Google who was supposed to be on that panel in Germany. And, you know, t just telling him about my work, giving him links and so on, because he was a former professor. Okay, it was only a few days after that th that this guy showed up at our house. And then it was a few days after that that the Google executive pulled out of that conference. Jesus. And so uh, they're not interested in communicating with you. Um, they've obviously told, either told people not to communicate with you or the people that you would like to talk to are aware of your work and they feel that it would negatively impact their job or their, oh, there's, there's, their career. I'm telling you, they're, they're, this, this, is, this has just been – for me, in many ways, a nightmare, an absolute nightmare, because there, there are people who won't, who won't help us, who won't serve on our board, who won't do this, who won't do that. I, we, we had an intern uh, lined up who was very, very good. You know, we get some really sharp people. They come from all over the world, actually. And the, we had this person all signed up, her start date was set up, and she called up and she said, I can't do the internship. I said, uh, why not? My grandmother... My grandmother looked you up online, and she thinks that you're like some sort of Trump supporter. And she said she'll cut me off if I do this internship. Jesus. So that's one of the reasons I keep repeating. I did, yeah. I did it four times, but I keep repeating, you know what? You lean left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because, uh, but it doesn't help. It doesn't help. They, they don't care. Uh, well, ever since that, ever since I testified, uh, things have terrible things uh, have happened. My one of my board members said to me, "Look," he said. He said, "In a way, you should be grateful, and and pleased that they left you alone for so many years." He said, "But that, but that for them was, you know, that was it. That was the final straw." And you know what happened after the after that hearing was. Trump tweeted about my my testimony. Hillary Clinton, whom I've been supporting forever, Hillary Clinton replies to Trump on Twitter and says, uh, this man's work has been completely discredited. It's all based on data from 21 undecided voters. What? what? Then... She said that? Yeah. Can you sue her? The, you know, it would take me away from the research... Uh, it would cost a fortune. Yes, I could have and probably could still sue her, yes. Because that's a factual statement, yeah. which is false and defamatory.